Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Thank you for joining us here on Westerns on the Web for another classic Western film. Here on Westerns on the Web, we believe that Westerns are timeless, that these classic Westerns, that these older ones are timeless entertainment fit for the whole family to see, and they have a lot of good values and lessons to teach. And that's why we're sharing them. Westerns on the Web has literally thousands of Western films in our archives that we're planning on sharing, and some of them are extremely rare films. Kick your boots up, relax, get ready for another action-packed Western, and we'll see you after the show. Paddling them canoes with sieves. Yeah. Simple one, you know how. Put away your toys, Pete, and keep a sharp lookout. Sure, boss. See him yet? No. What's that? Oh, it's just some punchers over at the Airhead Ranch singing themselves to sleep. to strip the whole slew of trap lines. I don't see Rusty. Well, maybe he's in trouble. Snooping around. Is he dead? Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. I don't know, but that's what we're going to find out. Hugh, you better take him back to camp. Here's their 
tracks. Looks like those fur steelers. They must have brought their load up the river in canoes and changed here to horses. I had cracky, you wait till I get my hands on them. Let's go. Riders leading some pack horses? Nobody came this way. Doggone it, I could have swore they come up in this direction. Maybe they headed down the lower canyon. We'll soon find out. Rusty. Yeah, he got it right in the back. The boys and I have been searching the hills for those trap line raiders, but... Find anything, Roy? Not a thing. Leave it to me. I'll bring them in. The sheriff will take care of it. You and the boys get on to the ranch now. Okay, Mr. Banning. Some people figure they can do a policeman's job better themselves. Yeah. They've seen too many movies. Well, I've got work to do. bunch of pelts brought 5,000. Not bad, huh? Well, the servant of the people. <laughs> now, ain't that just too bad about poor Rusty? Yes, you've probably been noticing that I've been losing a lot of sleep over it. I passed Rogers and some of his punches riding out of town just now. I was talking to them. They're playing amateur detective. You know, Rogers is a smart man, boss. I think you ought to get rid of him. I know, but I can't. Not unless I have a good reason. Why don't you frame one? Frame has a way of kicking back. No sense taking any risks. Besides, Rogers is a good ranch foreman. I know he uh, is. Shut but... up about Rogers. I'll take care of him. Okay. okay. I've just made out a report to Miss Stewart's New York business manager. How's she taken the drop in the fur business? With the representative of her interests out here, I have assured her that the Arrowhead Ranch is doing excellently. And that everything possible is being done to stop the thievery of the trap lines? Just like taking candy from a baby. Did you ever see the Stuart dame? No, the old man never brought her out here. After his death, I had a letter from her saying she was coming out to look over her interest, but she never came. I guess she couldn't break herself away from them New York cocktail parties, huh? Well, this ought to hold her for a while. Hey, Roger? Yeah. And the sharp decrease in the amount of pelts brought in for sale by the trappers continue. However, I'm happy to advise you that the authorities here are taking measures... ...which I feel will result in the speedy apprehension of the thieves who have been looting the trap lines. Very truly yours, Jerome Banning. Well, there you have it, my dear. But frankly, I find it hard to share Banning's continued optimism. Frankly, Mr. Harrison, I don't share it. This has been going on for the past four months. If it keeps up, I'm going to have to start taking in washing. I certainly don't understand it. 
Don't you think there's something funny going on out there? You mean Banning? Well, your father always trusted him. Well, it doesn't have to be Banning, but somebody's stealing most of the furs every month. I'm not realizing half the money I was. Mr. Banning keeps saying, don't worry, little girl, measures are being taken. Why, if my dad were alive and this happened, he'd be out there like a shot, tearing the place to pieces. Gives me an idea. I'll send a detective out there to investigate. The last time I had anything to do with a detective, he landed in jail. No, I think I'll go out there myself. I can stay at my Arrowhead ranch and look for... Did you say Arrowhead, ma'am? Yes, why? Oh, nothing. I just... But when you said Arrowhead, well, I just... Uh, dropped the teapot. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I did, I guess. Well, take it out and bring in some more. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> the Arrowhead. Imagine. <laughs> Sally's always being amazed by something. As I was saying, I can go out there and stay at my ranch and look things over quietly. The moment they found out who you were, you wouldn't find out a thing. No, you better let me handle this, Miss Stewart. I'll send a reliable man to investigate for us. Well, all right. But be sure you send a good man. I certainly will. I'll take care of it at once. Thank you. And now, if you'll excuse me. Surely. Goodbye, Miss Stewart. Goodbye. Sally, what were you so nervous about? Oh, well, you see, I... Well, I'm half engaged to, to one of the cowboys that works on the Arrowhead Ranch. You are? Mm-hmm. He's awfully handsome, too. Here he is. His name's Pat. Ain't he good-looking? He certainly is. But how'd you meet him? I didn't know you'd ever been out west. Well, uh, you won't laugh. Of course not. Well, we met through the Lonely Hearts Club. We're both members. Oh, I see. Uh, he sent me this ring last month. Oh, it's beautiful. But, Sally, are you sure you love him? Oh, well, if he's anything like his letters. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Sally, how would you like to see him? Oh, would I? You ain't gonna fire me. No. No, Sally, you and I are going to take a trip out to my ranch together. Huh? Here, sit down. I want you to write a letter to your lonely heart and tell him that you're on your way out to see him with another club member. Another club member? I've just joined the Lonely Hearts. You? With all the guys you got chasing after you? But I haven't any cowboys. And anyway, I hear they're different. Oh, boy. Uh, but you got to pay dues. How much? Uh, well, a buck to join and two bits a month. Well, if I don't get out there and find out who's stealing all our furs, I won't even be able to afford that. You write the letter. I'm going to call Harrison and tell him to forget about that detective. Think I'll make a good detective? You mean like Matta, what's her name? Yes. Gee, just like the crime club. <laughs> Everything ready? Yeah. Better keep a lookout while we're loading. Turn the truck around. Get ready to meet the gals, Roy. They ought to be here pretty soon. Here comes Gabby. He must have gotten tired of his own company. He sure is in a hurry to get back to his cooking. Well, howdy, Gabby. We were just... Now, don't get any ideas that I'm back from a job. I just wanted to tell you I saw a truck going up the same canyon where them killers disappeared. What about it? It's downright unusual, that's what. And I'll bet you that... Do you think the truck has something to do with the fur thief? That's exactly what I was going to say. Maybe you're right. 
Hugh, you better stay with the cattle. Well, what about the girls? Well, they can wait. Yeah, forever. Well, I guess we'll be on our way. What's this, a holdup? You might call it that. We want to take a look inside your truck. I'm riding empty, mister. You won't find a thing. Then you haven't anything to worry about. Unlock the back end. You heard what he said. your height. We'll never catch him now. Sally! Oh, Pat! Well, you look just like your pictures. W were you all right? Oh, yes. Uh, I want you to meet Miss Jones, too. Uh, Miss Stubbins. She's my girlfriend that I wrote you about. Oh, howdy, ma'am. How do you do? Uh, this is Roy Rogers, my pal and foreman of there, Head Ranch. Hello. How do you do? What happened? Oh, that truck that just flew by almost crashed into us. <laughs> yeah, just like city traffic. <laughs> We've been having trouble with fur thieves up here, and that truck was part of the outfit. I see. <laughs> the West is still wild, isn't it? Oh, you don't have to worry nothing with me around, Sally. Well, aren't you wild, too? Oh, you bet your life I am. <laughs> we better go back and see if we can get that other fellow to talk. Oh, we'll make him talk, all right. You follow us, huh? Uh-huh. Look out there. Don't try any tricks around Salovici. I ain't doing nothing. What is that? Well, that's what you call a South African slobberjack. Put your fingers in here like this, and you can't get them out unless you know how. Oh. Help! Help! Floyd! Tim! Floyd! Pat, anybody, get me out of this thing here! What's the matter, Gabby? Oh, quit blabbing. Get me out of this thing. Grab his other hand, Bob. Oh. Here, oh. here let me try. How'd you do that? Oh, it's easy if you know how. What happened, Gabby? Everything. I was keeping my eye on that Jasper when 12 other coyotes snuck up and grabbed me. I fought them. Knocked one of them colder than that cucumber. Wham! Then another. Wham! Laid two more out flat on a carpet. Wham! Wham! Then I shot. Then I was overcome by a superior force. I'm mighty proud of you, Gabby. Yeah. But you better come on back to the ranch. You're liable to get hurt. Don't you worry none about me. I ain't going back. I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Gabby. Can you girls cook? Can we? Wait till you taste my pie. And Sally makes the most heavenly cookies. They just melt in your mouth. You ain't gonna have no women cooking for you. What else can we do? You've quit. Who said I quit? Women cooks. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's nice out here. I should have come west before. I guess it is a little different than in the city. Oh, you've no idea. Peace and quiet. You like it, don't you? 
I sure do. It's always been my home. This ranch? Oh, I don't own it. I'm just forming here. It belongs to some dizzy girl in New York, a Miss Stewart. She inherited the ranch and a trading post in town when her father died. I see. Have you ever met her? No, and I hope I don't. She's probably one of those New York society girls without a brain in her head. Oh, yes, I've seen some of them. They're really stupid. You said it. Too much money for their own good. All they think about is how they look in those silly little old hats. You can have them. What, the uh, hats of the girls? <laughs> Both. Well, I'd certainly pity any society girl if she came out here. It's the way you feel about them. Oh, don't worry, they won't come. They don't get up until noon, then all they do is sit around in those fluffy gowns, eating candy and reading true confession. You've forgotten the Pekingese they always have on their lap. Oh, yeah. I'm sure glad you're not that way. So am I. They must be horrible people. Worse than that. Say, um, how long have you been in this Lonely Hearts Club? Oh, well, I just joined. Tell me about this first dealing. Oh, you wouldn't be interested in that. Well, I certainly would. I mean, I was wondering if you have any idea who's doing it. Not yet, but I'm going to find out. They killed one of my very best friends just last week. Oh, I'm sorry. This has been very interesting, Mr. Rogers. Especially your ideas about society girls. Good night. <laughs> What's so funny? My foreman. He was just telling me about Miss Stewart. Oh, you didn't tell him. I should say not. He doesn't think very much of Miss Stewart. Says she has no brains and too much money. He said that to you? Yes, but he didn't know he was talking about me. Well, just the same, I wouldn't let him get away with it. I'd fire him. No, because I'm going to show him that Miss Stewart isn't a scatterbrain. I wonder why. As if I didn't know. Oh, Sally, you're always jumping at conclusions. Conclusions, nothing. His name's Roy. And... Oh. Rushy, a couple of spare blankets. It's a little mite cool here at night. Oh, well, oh, thanks. Oh, I guess I'd better tell you this. If you hear any strange noises outside, don't get scared. Well, what kind of noises? Well, there's all sorts of wild critters prowling around here at night. There's wolves and catamounts and such like. Oh, are they dangerous? Dangerous? Well, Miss Wolf ain't so bad. But they ain't nothing worse than a catamount when he's hungry and mean. Why, only last week there was one of them climbing the windy of a cabin near here. Yes, sir. Sure messed up a couple of punches. Did he? Did he? Yeah. He did. We planted what was left of them the next day. Don't you worry, none. Just yell if you see anything. Well, I guess we'd better sleep with our clothes on tonight. Oh, he... He was just trying to scare us. Yeah. I hope. the banshee.
<laughs> Take it easy there, Roy. That's my hide you're digging into. Oh. Oh! Serves you right for scaring those girls. Uh, I only done it for your own good. I was just... Oh, no. <laughs> oh. 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 Well, that's all. She loved me. Oh. <laughs> Better get rid of Rogers and his men before we wind up behind the eight ball. Well, what's happened? They almost grabbed that shipment we made yesterday. Ed outsmarted them before they got a look in the truck. They nabbed Pete, but he got away. Well, why didn't Ed and Pete come in and tell me about it? They're afraid Rogers and his men will spot them. Well, you better get over to the ranch to see how much they know. I've already been over there. They suspect plenty about that truck, but all they know is what Ed and Pete look like. Well, have them lay low. I'll find some way to take care of those punchers. All right. Hey, there's a couple of girls over at the ranch. Girls? Yeah. Who are they? I don't know. I saw them when I went up there. You ever seen them before? No. They look like a couple of city girls. Been there since yesterday. Well, that's very interesting. I don't think Miss Stewart would like that at all. Not at all. Huh? Well, Rogers and the boys can't be paying much attention to their work, but they're entertaining a couple of girls out there. Too bad. Looks like Rogers and the boys will have to go. I picked this horse out for you myself. How do you like him? Gee, it's bad enough I have to ride him. Do I have to like him, too? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Rogers. Howdy, Mr. Banning. Where are the girls? Well, they're friends with Pat. They're visiting for a few days. Miss Stewart know they're here? No, how could she? Well, that's just the point. I don't think she'd like it. We're not running a dude ranch, you know. Well, I know that. Get them out of here right away, you understand? No, I don't think I do understand. Well, I don't like your tone, Rogers. Well, I don't think so much of yours, either. Where did you pick these, uh, girls up? I think you better be careful what you say. Are you threatening me by any chance? No, I'm just telling you to keep your big mouth shut about these girls or... Oh, what? Or I'll shut it for you. Why, you... Now you hit him, Pat. No, Pat. That'll cost you your job, Rogers. You're fired. Not so fast, mister. You don't know it, but you're the... Be quiet, Sally. As for you men... Rogers goes, we all go. Yeah, that's all right, too. I'll give the lot of you ten minutes to clear out. Well, what are you waiting for? This wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you and your lonely hearts. Never mind him. He's never happy unless he's grousing about something. Get your things packed and we'll be waiting for you. Oh, where are we going? With us. Zag nabbit, Roy, I told you women were nothing but born troublemakers. If it wasn't for them two gals, we wouldn't have to clear out without avenging poor Rusty. We'll still get that killer, Gabby. <laughs> we'll use the line cabin in Crystal Canyon until we get another job. Well, that's nothing. Anyhow, them two gals will have to go on home now. Oh, no, they don't. Those gals are coming with us. I ain't taking any chances on losing Sally. Then ding busted, I'm going off for myself. Don't want any part of them. Well, Gabby, I, I guess we can get along without you. Oh, trying to get rid of me, huh? Well, you ain't. I'm sticking closer than a mustard plaster. Why didn't you let me tell that banding guy who we are? Because the moment word gets around I'm out here, we won't be able to find out a thing. Well, it wouldn't hurt to tell Roy, would it? Well, I don't want him to know yet, either. Why not? Because he... Oh, stop asking silly questions and go get your things packed. Oh, I'm jumping at conclusions again, huh? Oh. To the rhythm of the joy that life has given you today. Take it to work and work will be played. To drive your cares away. 
listen to the beating of the happy heart repeating, don't delay. Sing to work and work will be played. Happy day. Drive your cares away. Come on and sing. sing. the song, we'll dance in the mood. Come on and sing. sing. the song, we'll travel with you. Come on and shout. shout. The hills will join in your song. Come on and shout. shout. The hills will help you along. Listen to the voices of the world as he rejoices to be gay. Sing to work and work will be played. Happy day. To drive your cares away. All oh, this world needs to be happy is song. Sing to work and work will be played. Sing to work and work will be played. I have felt the rhythm throbbing in my heart. Sing to work and work will be played. And I've heard the melody the whole day long. Sing to work and work will be played. Listen to the rhythm of the joy that life has given you today. Sing to work and work will be played. Listen to the beating of the happy heart repeating, don't delay. Sing to work and work will be played. To drive your cares away. Come on and sing. Sing the song, we'll dance in the blue. Come on and sing. Sing the song, we'll travel with you. Come on and shout. Listen to the voices of the world as he rejoices to be gay. Sing to work and work will be played. Happy day. To drive your cares away. Sing to work and work will be played. Happy day. Sing to work and work will be played. Happy day. Sing to work and work will be played. Happy day. Sing to work and work will be played. Happy day. Sing to work and work will be played. <laughs> Hey, somebody's coming out there. You got a telephone I can use? I got to call the sheriff. No, what's the trouble? Those trap line raiders are bringing in a bunch of furs through Jawbone Canyon tonight. How do you know that? Overheard a couple of them talking about it on the other side of the range. Grab your guns and saddle up. Quick. Roy, we're going with you. No, you better stay here. We're going to have our hands full and there's liable to be some shooting. Sally, come on, we're going to take a ride. Gee, just like in the, in the Western gun stories. That trapper was right. So do I. Listen. Here they come. Got their pack horses anyway, Gabby. Come on, boys, let's see if we can catch a couple of those fellas. Don't make a move. You're all under arrest. But listen, Sheriff, we were. Never mind that. You've got the furs there. That's enough for me. Anything else you want to say, you can say to the judge. Good heavens. The sheriff's arresting Roy and the others. Well, listen, you dang digit, we didn't steal Where's that. enough out of you, too? Where's that trapper who was going to warn you about those fur thieves? What trapper? I get it. We've been framed. Sure, everybody I ever arrested claimed they were framed. Now, come on, get going. Well, I guess we won't have to worry about Rogers and his friends anymore. Yeah, they sure fell for it. Yeah. Oh, you've got to tell them who we are now so the sheriff will believe us. You're right. 
Hey, those two girls over there. It'll be our next if they talk to the sheriff. Yeah, come on. Wait! Well, you girls seem to be in a hurry. Yes, Roy and the others are being arrested by the sheriff. Yes, we finally caught up with him. But he isn't a fur thief. Wait a minute. You're the fellow that told him they were coming through the canyon. He was only talking... I don't know what you're talking about, lady. Well, then you better listen to this. You don't know it, but you happen to be talking to Miss Joan Stewart. Miss Stewart? That's right. And I think I'm beginning to understand. <laughs> well, Miss Stewart, if that's who you are, we'll have to take very special care of you. And we ought to string up them killers as an example to the rest of them. Well, there's no telling what will happen at that trial. And I'd say we ought to take no chances on them getting loose. There's only one thing to do to crooks like them, and that is to hang them. Well, looks like they're going to have a necktie party in town. No. Yeah, people around here get the lynching fever mighty bad. I don't approve of the citizens taking the law into their own hands. That's the way I feel about it. We're picking up another bunch of pelts tonight. Be sure the boys are ready. Well, can't we wait till tomorrow? We'll be able to miss all the fun. Just as funny reading about it in the papers tomorrow. Run along. Hey, maybe we better tell Wilson about the girls. They could prove we were steered to a trap. He wouldn't believe them any better than he would us. Besides, he's liable to arrest them, too. Man, that wouldn't hurt my feelings any. It's their fault we got in this mess. Oh, dry up, you old... Say, Gabby, you got that gadget you got stuck in? Yeah, what? Let me have it. Hey, what do you got there? Practicing on my Chinese mug wound. Chinese what? Mug wound. Works like this. You put one finger in one end and... The other finger in the other end, and you can't get them out unless you know how. Hmm. Gee, she's falling off a horse. Give it here. I'll deputize you. You four get your horses and we'll go after them. Preserve, my ladies. Very funny. Stewart. 
You weren't bad. I cooked it myself. That's all I wanted to know. Well, I guess those friends of yours are about dead by now. What do you mean? Why, here, the trappers and the other folks are staged in sort of a little lynching bee. Too bad. They shouldn't have stuck their nose in other people's business. Would you mind loosening the rope around my ankles? It's so tight it's cutting my legs. Now, let's see. <laughs> We can get those horses saddled. You know how? No, but I can't think of a better time to learn. Like we shook them, Roy. Maybe, but it wouldn't hurt to put a few more miles between us and them. Yeah. Look, Gabby. That shot came from the direction of Steve's cabin. We're right over there. Got away just in time, but the sheriff and the posse's out after us. I don't place you can hide for a while. What happened to you and Sally? I'll tell you later. This is where they store the furs. Miss Stewart sure gonna be surprised when she finds out about Banny. She certainly is. We better get inside before somebody comes along and spots us. There's that confounded Steve. See if he's asleep inside. There's no 
one here, neither Steve nor the girl. Well, you gotta go in anyway. Saw something move up ahead. You're right, Roy. Looks like they're figuring on ambushing us. Okay, if they want to play like that. Some of you boys cross to the other side. Come on, Gabby. They'll probably be waiting for us down there. We better go afoot. Take that side. Sheriff takes right it and then duck on. Prove to you that you're after the wrong men. This isn't going to do you any good, Rogers. Maybe this will change your mind, Sheriff. Come on. Your guns. Come on, get back.
Now remember. What's the matter with all of you? Well, I hate to tell you this, Roy. Oh, we're... We're awfully sorry it had to happen this way, but... Uh, will you break the news to him, Bob? She's waiting for you at the house. She? You mean Miss Joan? No, the boss, Miss Stewart. She just got here about a half hour ago. Now, she's awfully peeved about something. She's using the room that I was in. Come in. Miss Stewart? Yes, and you're Mr. Rogers? Yes, ma'am. I understand that you don't think much of city girls, that you think they're all scatterbrains. Is that true? Well, I... Uh... Answer my question. That's right, Miss Stewart. I can't hand them a thing. Is that so? Well, let me tell you... I like a girl with nerve, like Miss Stubbin. Now, wait a minute. Maybe city girls aren't so bad after all. Oh, I don't know. I've got the fluffy gown and the chocolates. But I couldn't find a Pekingese. Well, at least the Pekingese was your idea. <laughs> Let's go out. All right. Seem like palms in the promised land. The prairie dog yep and the coyotes cry. Just like a melody from the sky when love comes down the trail. The moon turns soft and pale and scatters silvery stardust on the plains. Now a cowboy's life is full and free, but he says goodbye to his liberty when romance rides the rain. Now do you take this gal for to be your wife, to love and cherish all the rest of your life, through storm and strife forevermore? I'll take the gal. Oh, you will. Why, sure. Love comes down the trail, the moon turns soft and pale, and scatters silvery stardust on the plain. Now a cowboy's life is full and free, but he says goodbye to his liberty when romance rides the rain. I know I'm going to move out. Wasn't that just very enjoyable, wonderful, classic entertainment. And it's timeless. Westerns are timeless. Thank you for joining us here on Westerns on the Web. Make sure you check back with us often because we're going to have a lot more Western films for you to view here online for free. I'm Bob Terry. Have a great day and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail.